Hello my friends, in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you all the consumables I use to run my reef system. So that includes the salt, the two-part, additives, food, testers, cleaning agents. Really quickly, before we get to the content, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're a fellow reefer and you're new to this channel, please subscribe to the channel as it really helps the channel grow. And currently only about 14% of our viewers are subscribed and if we can get that number up to 20% we will definitely surpass a thousand subscribers which would be awesome. So thank you my friends and let's get to the content. First thing on the list is salt. 95% of the salt I use is Instant Ocean Reef Crystals. I do have a Red Sea Coral Pro bucket. And the reason I have that bucket is because a while ago I was running out of salt and I refused to pay full PetSmart retail price. Up here in Canada, Reef Crystals sells for $87. So I refused to pay $86 and instead I paid, I don't know, like $90 or something for the Red Sea Coral Pro Salt. I don't have any complaints about either salt. What I was doing to incorporate the Coral Pro Salt from Red Sea was I would mix the two together. I used about 90% Reef Crystals and 10% Red Sea Coral Pro. And now the Red Sea Salt is finished, so I'm exclusively using Reef Crystals. I've never had a problem with this, except I did do an ICP test recently, and it's come to my attention that my lithium is quite high. When I looked online in the forums, a lot of people say that it's due to reef, reef crystals. And online, they're saying that it's not really a big deal, high lithium. Currently, most, if not all, my coral are looking really good, and I'm not going to change anything here. All right, on to what I dose to maintain my alk and calcium. If you've been in the hobby for a while, you know that to maintain elk, you either want to dose two-part or use a calcium reactor. I've been using two-part since nearly the beginning. And the two-part that I use is ESV B-Ionic. The reason I went with ESV is because I really liked what it provided. With normal two-part, so stuff you can get from, say, BRS, all it is is calcium and alkalinity. With ESV, what you're getting is calcium and alkalinity, but they've also included trace elements directly into the two-part. And their trace elements work really well. I know they work really well because I did an ICP test about two months ago and nearly every single element was on point with where it should be. And that's quite remarkable. I don't do a lot of water changes. I try to do water changes like once a week. But even once a week, I'm not changing very much water. At most, it's about 10%. The other thing I do is that I also have calc washer in my auto top off. It's not in a stirrer, I just throw it into my auto top off water and I stir it up and then I keep the lid closed. So that's what I do and that maintains my alk at about, I would say 8.6. Calcium I'm shooting for about 420. The only additive that I currently use is iodine. And iodine is a very important element. It often gets depleted in a reef tank because your macroalgaes will use iodine. Carbon will absorb iodine. And oftentimes this is the one element that does get depleted in the tank. To the left are the foods that I feed the fish. Omega-1 is a flake food. I'm also feeding that soft spirulina from Fauna Marin. And then this is a hatchery 
food thing that I got from BRS right in the front here. I mix it all together and then I feed twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. To the right are my coral foods. If you're going to feed amino acids to your tank, you'll want to do that first thing in the morning. So feed your aminos in the morning. Don't do it at night. It's, it's not supposed to have as much of a benefit as if you feed it right at the beginning of your light cycle. And then in the middle there are some powders. Below that is refroids, which is quite a popular powder food for feeding all your coral. The only thing you want to be careful about with refroids is that it does elevate your phosphates. So you don't want to go overboard, depending on your system, depending on your filtration. What I like about Venereef is it's got bacteria built into it. And that seems to be the flavor of the month. Everyone's talking about bacteria. We want more bacteria in your reef tank, like good bacteria. I, I think they both work very well. I think the aminos probably work very well too. I don't watch my coral close enough to realize if there's an effect. These are the testers I use. You can see I mainly use salifert, except for when it comes to phosphates. Because phosphates, we want to keep it at such low quantities, parts per billion. Any other testers that are not HANA, ultra low phosphorus or ultra low phosphate, you're not going to get an accurate reading. So at least with the HANA ultra low, um, I can get a pretty good idea of where my phosphates are. And for salt, I just use this eBay refractometer. I calibrate it with RODI water. So I calibrate it to zero. I know a lot of people online are talking about calibrating it to 1.026 salinity, and they'll do that with calibration solution. One thing you need to be careful with that solution is that over time, stuff may precipitate from it. And then it's no longer 1.026, but then you're trying to you think you're calibrating to 1.026. That's really gonna F up your tank. I don't fully understand, and maybe somebody can explain this to me in the comments, but I really do not understand what the reasoning is behind having to calibrate this to 1.026 calibration fluid as opposed to calibrating it to zero using RODI water. If if this is a scientific instrument that takes measurements from zero to whatever, sorry, I mean from 1.0 to whatever, then why wouldn't you just use RODI water that should be 1.00? And if that's calibrated to that, then when you test your salt water, it should be fine, like it should be accurate. I don't understand it. Um, I mean, my other explanation is my explanation for all things. It's marketing. So whoever made this 1.026 calibration solution, what are they going to say? They're going to say whatever it takes to get you to buy it. Do you need it? I don't think you do. And in fact, I don't think Jason Fox thinks you do either. So, okay. Last thing I want to say about the sulfur tests. I've been told from other people Hey, Salifert, it's not the most accurate. I understand there's a margin of error. There's going to be a margin of error in almost every test. Even the HANA tells you that there's a margin of error. Here, here are my thoughts on Salifert test kits. I think they're great. In reefing, you do not need the most accurate testing results. You don't. I need a test that's replicable, that I can replicate. So let's say my elk is testing at 8.6. I try to keep it about 8.6, 8.9. I know, let's say 
even if there's a margin of error of 1. If it's 8.6, well, that means it could be 7.6 to 9.6. That's totally fine. That's within the safe ELK parameters. What is more important is that I can replicate this test so that I'm doing it the same every time. And it doesn't matter if it's showing me 8.6 and it's actually 8.0. That doesn't matter. What matters is that I can replicate it so that it's always telling me 8.6. Because because that's the important thing. I want to know that it's stable. And that's what you guys need to know. Like, is it stable? These test kits are pretty good. When I compare the results to my ICP test, I'm really happy. That's it, my friends. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys watching the video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about what I feed, if I've considered any type of additives, if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, happy Easter, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.